I'm speechless, and that's unusual. Fantastic, mind-blowing, and heaven. It's a rare sight. It's remarkable. Oh. Right here. I mean, it's ma absolutely magnificent. It's a place that I keep coming back to again and again and again. Coming all this way to South Georgia, you are just hit by this color, green. South Georgia to me is one of the most incredible wildlife spectacles anywhere on earth. We've got elephant seals, we've got king penguins. As you're walking among them, they're really impressive animals. It's incredible. Right in front of me here, about five meters away, is a gray-headed albatross sitting on the nest with a beautiful backdrop, curving beach. You're always looking for lines in your composition. And this is the place for iconic species of the Falklands. And it is one of the most isolated but beautiful, amazing places. 85% of the total population of the islands is in Stanley. We're a very small place, but it's our strategic location in the world that people are interested in. What a privilege at the beginning of the 21st century with uh, almost uh, 7 million or billion people on the planet to find such beauty, such isolation, such raw wilderness. We're sitting above a most remarkable colony. I've just enjoyed every aspect. Travel is important for our lives for, for many reasons, but mainly just to meet other people, to identify with them, empathize with them. Delicious. With an expedition, you never know where you're going to go exactly. You're going to go where the action is. This just has it all. Great expedition travel right here. I mean, uh, it's real adventures. I mean, everything about this place, it's just perfect for us. We've arrived at the Falkland Islands today, our first landing for our explorations of the Falklands, South Georgia, and the Antarctic Peninsula. It's a pretty windy day here. That's not uncommon at all in the Falklands. We've hiked over the island. We're on an island called West Point, which is here in the western part of the archipelago, to visit a colony of black-browed albatross and rockhopper penguins. The Falkland Islands have the largest colonies of black-browed albatross in the world. Two of the largest colonies in the world. This one, which has quite a few birds in it, is relatively small compared to some. Some of them have many hundreds of albatross living in one place together. These birds are on nests right now, probably beginning to incubate eggs here at the beginning of the breeding season. In between the albatross and their big nests, you can see the rockhopper penguins. They are using the areas that have been cleared by the albatross. They don't build much of a nest. They just kind of lay their eggs down there on the dirt. Well, it's, uh, it's certainly a blustery day but when this kind of uh, rookery is, is available at the end of a, the hike, it's all worth it. It's, uh, this is an amazing spot and to, to see these two coexisting is, uh, is great. and albatross. <laughs> How much better can you get than that? We are 
at New Island. This is our first landing and it's a beautiful summer's day. The guests are going to climb a hill and very soon after are going to come to this fantastic setting to see some rock hopper penguins in a colony of South American fur seals. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. We've only sailed for one day in really smooth seas and we're very, very excited of our new adventure. It's a great way to start this trip. New Island is an island in West Falkland. It's a wildlife reserve. This island has a lot of human history. From the 1800s, we had sealers and later whalers coming to the shores every summer for their hunting. Nowadays, it is looked after by a trust and is definitely a conservation effort in order to maintain the wildlife and the beauty of the Falkland Islands. This is Gritvik and Whaling Station. Uh, this was actually the first whaling station that was set up on South Georgia. What most people think of when they think of whaling is small wooden ships heading out to sea um, in the 17 and 1800s, catching sperm whales and, and creating blubber, which was used to light the lamps of London. But what many people don't realize is that the height of whaling, especially in the Southern Ocean, was in the 1950s. More whales were caught in the 1950s than any of the preceding decades in the 1900s. When we look at accounts from those whalers, those like young men who'd mostly travelled from the Hebrides in Scotland and from Norway to come and work here, they recount seeing 30 metre whales, huge animals, being pulled up onto the fencing platform here and completely you know, taken apart and processed in as little as 20 minutes. It was an extremely honed process um, and they had great big rotary saws that would saw down through these and they were so dangerous. Uh, these saws would sometimes split and with every single whaling station you also find a significantly well attended graveyard, mostly with young men who had just started their career and uh, what a horrifying job to have to do. I mean it was it's skilled work, it was really hard work and many of them lost their lives doing it. And what for? What was all this whale oil, all this blubber used for? It was mostly rendered down into oil, hydrogenated, and used for things like margarine, um, soap, these menial products that I don't really think justify the extreme loss of life. When we look around these waters and see the sheer magnitude of marine life and the numbers of whales that we've encountered, that's a really awe-inspiring thing to see. It's, it speaks of the resilience of marine life and it's incredible that species that were driven to such small fringe populations have managed to rebound so successfully. It's really, really heartwarming. West Point Island in the Falkland Islands. And as you can see behind me, not only black browed albatrosses, but also lots of rock hopper penguins that breed with them. They're all on these cliffs. They go much farther than you can see at the moment, all around these sea cliffs. And the, the birds coming and going in the updrafts, truly magnificent. Now, albatrosses are the greatest long distance flyers on earth. They can spend months or even several years at sea. They live for decades and a 50 year old albatross has flown about 4 million miles. That is really just an awesome, awesome fact about these creatures. They are as graceful as angels, but they are as tough as leather and they can take anything that the ocean can hurl at them. The worst storms, the stiffest winds, uh, lots of weather that people simply would not be able to survive in, that's home for them. So they have my admiration and they're also really, really beautiful.
<laughs> we were just lucky to be so close to see these two birds, the mother feeding the baby, and uh, was just so close. The noise was so intense. You just feel like you were part of it. The Falklands and South Georgia sit on the fringe of Antarctica and hence they benefit from an incredible abundance of food in the Southern Ocean and uh, open seas year round and milder temperatures. So the concentrations of wildlife in these islands is astounding. We're looking at part of the largest albatross colony of any species in the planet. These are black-browed albatross. It is uh, believed that there is about a million birds in the Falkland Islands. This is the largest colony with close to 600,000 birds. This is truly one of the wildlife uh, experiences of the planet. <laughs> 